An out-of-place artifact is an archaeological discovery that doesn't appear to fit in with the place and period it's supposed to be from. They're often thought to be proof of ancient civilizations, aliens, or other paranormal occurrences. In the video today, we're looking at 10 such objects and the strange stories behind them. Number 10. Koso Artifact in 1961, three people were hunting for valuable stones in California when they came across a mysterious and ancient-looking artifact. They had originally mistaken it for a geode, which is a hollow rock containing sparkly minerals. However, this particular mineral nodule was hiding something much stranger. A cylinder made of porcelain-like material and a thin shaft of bright metal, all encased in a hexagonal sheath of copper and another unidentified material. This was clearly a technological object, which was odd because geodes tend to be at least 500,000 years old. There was no way that the Koso artifact, as it came to be known, could be man-made if it was that old. Mainstream science or archaeology never took the artifact seriously, still it immediately became a subject of pseudoscientific and alt archaeological speculation and remained one for decades. Some said that it was from ancient Atlantis, others thought it was left behind by alien visitors or even time travelers. Finally, in 1999, a group of skeptics took some x-rays of the supposed ancient artifact. They had noticed that the Koso artifact looked a whole lot like an old spark plug and showed the images to various collectors. They immediately recognized the artifact. It was indeed a battered old spark plug from the 1920s with some of its metal parts rusted away. Number 9. The Beringer Stones Early 18th century scientist and university big shot Johann Beringer was a respected physician and natural historian. He was particularly interested in the debate about the origins of fossils, which raged white hot in the scientific circles of the era. He was also a very single minded man who thought that he could do no wrong. One day, during a field trip to dig for fossils, Beringer's student decided to prank him. On the mountain, they painted fake fossils that were actually nothing more than carefully carved frogs, spiders, birds, lizards, and the like. Beringer fell for it and thought that these increasingly ridiculous shapes were actually fossils. The students decided to see how far they could go, so they made more fossils. The new ones featured inscriptions in Hebrew, Syrian, and Babylonian styles. One of them even had the name Jehovah on it. Again, Beringer believed his eyes completely. He started to develop a theory that fossils were merely a kind of bored graffiti by God himself. He then wrote a book about it. And then, just as the book came out, he found another bearing a fossil, one that had his own name on it. That's when a terrible realization dawned upon him. Some versions of the story say that the humiliated Beeringer spent his fortune trying to buy every copy of his ridiculous book, and he died poor and heartbroken. In reality, his fate was less tragic. Beeringer found out that the prank had been orchestrated by two jealous colleagues, and he immediately sued them. They were disgraced, and Beeringer went on to have an illustrious career and write several more books. Number 8. The Pangbochi Yeti Finger There is a mysterious item labeled Yeti's Finger in the vaults of the Royal College of Surgeons, Hunterian Museum in London. The adventurer who brought it there says he discovered it in 1958 when he was part of a group that visited the Pangboshi Monastery in Nepal. During their stay, they saw the monastery's prized relic, a large human-like hand with sharp nails and crusty black skin. The adventurer was intrigued and made an arrangement with the temple's custodians. In exchange for a suitable replacement and a donation to the monastery, he would get one finger from the supposed yeti hand. His accomplices somehow managed to acquire a human hand and the exchange was made and the finger ended up in the vaults of a museum. In 2008, someone finally got around to running tests on the clawed, ruined finger and it was almost certainly from a human. Although the condition of the finger almost certainly explains the almost part, they were still intrigued enough to try and get more samples from Pambochi. Unfortunately, someone had stolen the original hand, so the researchers never got the opportunity to thoroughly debunk it. As a strange little epilogue here, the prop makers for the Lord of the Rings movies later presented the monastery with a lovingly crafted replica of the hands and another stolen relic. This way, the monks could go on showing these strange objects to people and make a little profit for the monastery. Number 7. Kensington Runestone The Kensington Stone is an old Viking runestone that was found in Minnesota, of all places. In 1898, farmer Olaf Oman unearthed this grey, 200-pound rock with ancient runic writing on it. For the next century, debates of its true origin absolutely raged. Amateur archaeologists have poured money into putting together evidence of the stone's authenticity. Academics feel that Vikings probably didn't sail all the way to Lake Superior and have spent decades trying to prove 
prove that the Kensington Rune Stone is a fake. In 2011, a Swedish research paper found some evidence that the stone is indeed a forgery. They found and deciphered a numerical code carved into the stone. It read, The omens found. We kept collected firewood at the stone. Unfortunately, this makes it seem that the Kensington Stone was just an elaborate prank by Olaf Oman, who could not face the shame of revealing the truth when the story exploded. Number 6. Tamil Bell the mystery of the Tamil bell is not who made it or when. It bears clear inscriptions and markings of the Tamil culture, and experts estimate that it was made sometime between 1400 and 1540 AD. However, the question is this. How did the bell end up in a remote Maori village in New Zealand, where the natives used it? As a cooking pot. There is no other indication that the area had ever been visited by other cultures before 1840 or so when European William Colenso met them. Even stranger, the villagers told Colenso that they had found the bell in the roots of a large tree which had been blown over in a storm many years before. Exactly how the bell found its way to the village has never been conclusively proven. Still, many people have been interested in its history, and careful research has given us some insight about one very possible reason which experts call the the derelict theory. It doesn't feature any ancient foreign visitors to New Zealand or paranormal forces, though. Sorry to disappoint. According to the derelict theory, the original owner of the bell was a man called Moslem Tamil, who was likely from one of the well-known ship-owning families based on the port of Nagapatam. This port is located in southeast India. One of Tamil's ships was overwhelmed by the sea and abandoned, yet its wooden hull remained intact enough to keep afloat for years. Over time, the currents brought the empty ship into New Zealand, where it was cast ashore. Centuries passed, and the elements took their toll until the bell was the only thing that remained, resting under the tree that had grown over it until the Maoris finally found it. Number 5. Sakara Bird the Saqqara bird is a small wooden bird-shaped statue that was excavated in 1898 from a tomb in Saqqara, Egypt. Experts estimated to be around 2,000 years old, and mainstream researchers say it was a child's toy, a boomerang, or perhaps an early weather vane of sorts. However, other more mystically minded people have noticed that it has certain aerodynamic properties that make it seem like a scale model of an extremely efficient glider-type airplane. Here's what one pioneer of such thinking, Dr. Carly Messier, wrote about these properties. The wing is made of one piece of wood, and its span is exactly 18 centimeters. The part of the body is the thickest, 8 millimeters. Then it tapers in thickness towards the tips. One can also note that there is a dihedral angle, which is slightly unequal on both sides due to slight distortion of the wood caused by the passage of time. It's worth noting that while the properties he describes are correct, he also assumes that the Sakara bird used to have a tailplane back in the day. This doesn't do his theory any favors, because there is no proof of the object ever having one, and without it, the bird doesn't have enough aerodynamic stability to fly reliably. He even built a balsa wood replica of the bird to test his theories, and it flew very well for a few yards, and only with the added tailplane. Other people have tried to do test replicas of the Sakara bird with or without the tail, with varying results. We'll probably never know what this object was supposed to be, but if the Egyptians were using it as a model for building aircrafts, it's fair to say they would have had many, many crashes. Number 4. Dendera Light Bulb The ancient temple of Hathor in Dendera, Egypt, features a number of underground caverns and corridors. One of the walls in this complex features the Dendera Light Bulb, a strange hieroglyphic image that looks a whole lot like a crook's tube, an early version of the light bulb. Shows like Ancient Aliens and Paranormal Enthusiasts have claimed that the image is proof of mysterious ancient technologies. A wavy snake represents the filament, a lotus flower depicts the socket of the bulb, and a jed pillar is an image of an insulator. There's also a picture of a balloon, which some claim is a warning that the device could be dangerous for people who don't use it correctly. It's a fantastic theory. If correct, it would completely change the way we think about the ancient Egyptians. It's just a shame that, in reality, any Egyptian historian could tell you that the light bulb and the light emanating from it actually depict a lotus flower and its scent. Number 3. The Dorchester Pot the Dorchester pot was a strange, ornate metallic object that was found in two parts at an explosion site during the 19th century. It had reportedly been hiding inside the stone for roughly 500 million years, which clearly meant that it wasn't man-made. Was it an artifact from an ancient and possibly alien civilization? Well, whatever the truth, it certainly was enough to interest people. 
The pot was even featured in Scientific American in an article that called it a relic of a bygone age. Of course, the real story is a lot more mundane. The artifact is almost certainly just an Indian pipe holder from the Victorian era, and therefore it was just a few years old at the time of the finding in 1852. So why wasn't it recognized immediately for what it was? Well, unfortunately, we just don't know. Maybe the finders just weren't up to date on fancy pipe holder design, or maybe they really wanted to believe that ancient cultures from hundreds of millions of years ago had had a very similar aesthetic to their own. Still, Indian pipe holder or not, how did the Dorchester pot artifact get inside the supposedly 500 million year old rock in the first place? The answer is depressingly simple. It probably didn't. The broken object was found in the rubble after the explosion, so there is absolutely no proof that it was ever inside the rock. It's most likely that someone just discarded the object near the site, and it got caught up in the blast. Number 2. Abydos Helicopter The Abydos Helicopter is another hieroglyphic mystery that people enjoy depicting in the strangest way possible. It's an Egyptian bas-relief that is completely unassuming except for one odd fact. One part of this ancient artifact appears to be an image of a very modern helicopter. Pictures of the artifact made rounds on various paranormal-themed mail lists of the 1990s. Some people even thought there was more to the image than the helicopter. They saw multiple planes, a submarine, and even a UFO. However, actually Egyptologists are all too familiar with the famous helicopter and are all too happy to explain what it really is. First of all, the pictures that circulated in the paranormal enthusiast circles were often doctored to look even more mysterious than the real thing. Although the actual glyphs do somewhat resemble a helicopter, this is just a coincidence caused by erosion and some lazy stonework. It's the humanized tendency to see familiar shapes where there are none that is really responsible for this helicopter. Number 1. Bygone Pipes the bygone pipes are one of the most mysterious out-of-place artifacts ever discovered. They're a vast, sophisticated series of rusty metallic pipes embedded in the rock of Mount Bygone in a particularly harsh region of the Qinghai province of China. The pipe's diameter ranges from a fraction of an inch to 16 inches, and the way they're buried in the area's geology means they definitely weren't installed using modern technology. In fact, the pipes, which seem to connect a strange mountain cave and a nearby saltwater lake, almost certainly predate known humans human history. It's virtually impossible that the bygone pipes are a forgery. It's practically guaranteed that they're ancient. It was once thought that they might be a byproduct of volcanic activity forcing high iron magma through fissures in the rock, but that's unlikely because there's an oil field nearby. Oil fields take a long time to form, and their relationships with volcanic activity tend to be pretty flammable. So did we finally find the real deal? Are the bygone pipes a construction project by alien visitors from many millennia? ago. And, well, it might not surprise you to learn that the answer is no. Recent research indicates that the mysterious pipes are actually fossilized casts of ancient tree roots. The roots were once carried to their current resting place by an overflow from a long extinct lake, and over time they were subjected to the forces of pedogenesis, the process of soil forming, and diagenesis, the transformation of soil into rock. This covered them with a rusty metallic cast, which remained and was buried by geology after the roots themselves themselves with it away. To back up this theory, the scientists collected samples from the pipes and discovered ancient plant material and even microscopic tree rings. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. If you're looking for something else to watch right now though, why not check out some other videos linked to on the screen. And as always, thank you for watching.